class. Welcome to Advantage. I'm Dr. April Strom, and today what we're going to talk about is just in general function notation. And this can be a real sticky point for a lot of students, not understanding sort of what the function notation really tells us. So I want you to think about just the notation in general are like directions about what to do. And once you understand what those directions are telling you to do, then you can go forward with the problems. Okay. So let's start with a good old fashioned y equals f of x. And you've probably been told many, many times that, oh, these are the same things. Y is the same thing as f of x. Yes and no. So yes, in the sense that they both represent output values to a function, but no in the sense that this part, f of x, tells us so much more about what's going on and what the input was than the plain y does, okay? All right, so one thing I want to mention, just as a reminder, is the x itself in this crazy notation is considered the input. Okay, so that's important to keep track of because I'm about to do a few examples where that's gonna be critical. The next thing to know is this whole f of x function itself, that notation, represents the output. So here we've got the output. Now you might be wondering, well, what does the f by itself represent? Well, it actually represents the name of the function. And that's important. So if somebody said to you, what's the name of this function? You wouldn't tell them f of x. You would just say f. f is the name of this function. x is the input. f of x is the output. So let's use this information to try to tackle this particular problem. I have given us here a quadratic function to begin with. So f of x equals negative x squared plus 3x plus 4. And what I want to do first is how about we find, oh, f of 2, because why not? So f of 2, what that tells us to do according to this notation is to take the 2 as an input and substitute it into the function itself. And I'm going to substitute it in a couple of places because there are a couple of places that contain an x. So I have here a 2 being substituted in for this x in this location, as well as this x in that second location. You can't forget to do the second x. After many years of teaching, I notice many students tend to make a mistake on that second x. So here we go. So I, I substitute in, I have a negative something squared, plus I'll come back to that something and fill it in, plus three times something plus my four. And again, that something is going to be the input that I started with, a 2 and a 2. Yeah. So now this is negative 2 squared here. And by the way, the 2 is the only thing that's being squared, not a negative 2. So it's important to wrap this 2 right here in parentheses, even though in my problem I didn't start with parentheses. So here I have just a 2 that's being squared times the negative on the outside. Continue on, plus 3 times the 2 plus 4. And once I tackle that, then all I have to do is do the arithmetic and I'm done. So again, I'm going to really caution you. Make sure that you continue your notation all the way down. It's so critical to do that for a number of reasons. So here we go. We've got f of 2 is going to be equal to, again, the way I operate this on with rules of um, our, our operations here, I'm going to square the 2 first then tackle the negative. So 2 squared is 4 times a negative out front, negative 4. Plus the 3 times 2, so plus 6, plus the 4 that was also there right here. And uh, add all my like terms and so forth together, you notice the minus 4 and the plus 4 later on down the line add up to 0. So all that's left in this particular problem is f of 2 equaling 6. Now, I'd like to pause for a second and just simply say a reminder here, the 2 is the input, okay, and the 6 that I obtained after all of that crazy work is considered the output. Okay, so I have now essentially, I could write this as an ordered pair if I wanted to. For an input of 2, I get an output of 6, and that could be an ordered pair that later I go to graph if I wanted to. Okay, so let's tackle a second example. Okay, so for a second example, let's use the same function, f of x equals negative x squared plus 3x plus 4, and let's find f of negative 2. So here we go. We have f of negative 2 is equal to negative of a negative 2 squared. Got to be careful when I'm writing this. Got to use parentheses here. 
So I have a negative of something being squared plus my three times something being uh, multiplied there. And then I'm gonna add the four on the end. There's the structure of my function and the thing that goes inside these parentheses is the input negative two this time. Okay, so notice again, reminder, I put parentheses, so I'm very careful dealing with order of operations and, um, and that negative, in fact, two negatives that are sitting there. So continue with my notation down, I have f of negative two is gonna be equal to, ignore this negative for now, I'm gonna deal with this part here, negative two quantity squared is a negative two times a negative two. So because I have that, this piece right here gives me a positive four, okay? So negative two times a negative two, positive four times the negative that was already out there. So that gives me now a negative four. Over here, I have a positive three, but though times a negative two, that gives me now a negative six sitting here. So, so far I have minus four, subtract six from it, and then add four that I already had down here. Okay. Now you're done with the substitution of that negative two in that function. Now just clean up the arithmetic. I have f of negative two is equal to, here again, like last time, I had a negative four, but then later on down the line, I had a positive four. Those two numbers add up to be zero. So all that's left is my negative six. And now I have a new output given a new input that I started with. And if I wanted to write it as an order pair like I did before, I could do that. For an input of negative two, I would have an output of negative six, okay? Now, just to recap on all of this, I want you to keep in mind that just be careful with the input that you have going into all the right places in your particular function. And if you wanted to think about these numbers or expressions to be something other than a number or an expression, you can. So just kind of a little bit of a review here. Let's just be fun and say, what if I really wanted to find like f of heart? Well, all that would tell me to do is take a heart and plug it into my function. What if I wanted to find an f of pi? Well, pi is a perfectly good number. It looks like a little symbol here rather than a, an actual numerical value, but it is a numerical value, 3.14159, and it keeps going and going forever and ever. Same idea, though. I could simply take that and substitute it into my function f. You could even get more crazy if you wanted to do something like f of 3x plus 1. All that says is take 3x plus 1 as a unit, as a quantity together and plug it in, substitute it into my function just as I did my numbers. So maybe this could be something you tackle after the video is over and I just want to say thank you for watching and I hope you'll watch the next video where we're going to actually talk about this same idea of function notation but using tables.